Hey guys, it's Shannon from the Anxiety and OCD Treatment Center of Central Pennsylvania. Um, I've got Ace, my very old greyhound, joining me here. So he's just hanging out. Um, he's usually here with me in sessions too. And um, I don't know if you can see, but he has to wear pants at this point. Um, anyway, he's a good boy. He likes to join sessions. So a lot of people do know him. So I am here to do the second episode about contamination OCD, um, and I will try to keep it brief, but um, I wanted to check back in and talk a little bit about common compulsions with contamination. And so usually um, we see a lot of excessive and repetitive hand washing, hand sanitizer use, um, wiping, um, even like with the toileting routine um, or, or use of wipes, excessive use of, of um, it could be Clorox wipes, it could be um, antibacterial wipes, um, showering excessively or having like certain routines with, um, with showering, um, cleaning, like cleaning phones, keys, um, removing clothing before coming into the home, like in a laundry room or a mud room, that is pretty common. Um, changing clothes repeatedly, um, having special clothes for like work clothes or home clothes, you know, like things like from work can't come into the home environment, stuff like that. Um, I see pretty frequently with clients with contamination, OCD. Um, keeping contaminated items in certain special places. So if one would have like a work bag or something, they may have a special chair that that work bag sits on and that's the only place that it's allowed to go. Uh, having uh, clean spaces or safe spaces like maybe keeping your bed a clean or safe space uh, where you don't sit on it in clothes um, that have been outside of the home. It's only, you're only allowed to be on your bed when you've showered, stuff like that. Um, throwing away contaminated items, that might be a thing. So if maybe you were sick one time and then, um, you decide that you would um, just get rid of those items because there's this association with maybe I would be sick again if I wore this item or relating that item, maybe like having a contaminated item because you were with a certain person that you deem dirty, um, those types of things. Um, researching about germs, illness, disease, uh, asking for seeking reassurance or reassuring yourself about um, whether or not something was dirty or that you're clean enough or that you won't get sick, any of those types of things. Um, avoiding certain things, uh, avoiding things after showering or washing, like, like not going out or doing anything else after coming home and showering. Um, from work, that might be something we would see. Um, not sitting on toilet seats or using public restrooms, uh, using paper towels or tissues, types of barriers, maybe using your sleeve as a way to open doors, um, using foot your foot to open a door or um, turn a faucet off or flush toilets. Um, even sometimes a I'll talk with people who are using Lysol or Clorox wipes on their own skin, which is actually not recommended at all. Um, using other rituals to um, so that might end up being kind of like magical thinking, like other things to kind of like feel like they're undoing some type of contamination that has occurred. And then I, I've also um, worked with clients who will like hold their breath to avoid breathing contaminated air. So like if you're walking past like a bathroom door or a porta potty or something like that, like holding your breath the whole time. Um, so that's another thing. Um, there are just 
so many, I couldn't, I certainly couldn't name all of the compulsions that people do, um, or even all of this, the obsessions that, uh, people have in relation to contamination, OCD. Um, but those are just some of them. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, um, just a little bit of information about that and, um, get you thinking about it and recognizing, you know, signs and symptoms and, um, letting you know that like one of the things that is really helpful, like if you have a family member with OCD, just really working towards like decreasing any accommodating behaviors you might be doing, like engaging in washing your, your own hands or um, and just engaging in the behaviors that are being requested by the person that has OCD or, or offering reassurance, how that is actually really not helpful in the long term for that person that's suffering. And um, so those are some of the things that we start with, you know, early in treatment. And so I thank you guys for stopping by please subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can certainly follow us on is this OCD um, on Instagram and uh, yeah, you can check out our Facebook page as well, which is the anxiety and OCD treatment center of central Pennsylvania. So thanks so much.